Previously on Paranormal Site, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. I'm sorry, something's bugging me. I have to check back. I'm gonna have to check back there. Uh oh. Oh, nothing. I guess this place just keep me on edge. Uh, oh, fuck you, fuck you, dude. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, <laughs> so, that's so mean. That's so fucking mean, dude. And now back to Paranormacite. Hello! Sneako B! Back with some more Paranormacite, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. We last left off. We were confronted by a strange man who turned out to be the assistant to our boss at a soap company or, or something, I don't know. And also someone who has a penchant for snapping necks. And for that exact reason, screw this guy. Boom, freaking dead, bitch. You know, while we're at it, yeah, fuck it. This, this high school girl's dead. This nerdy guy with glasses is dead. The sexy mom lady is dead. And then finally, I'm dead. <laughs> Yes, not surprisingly, seemingly gathering all the energy in the curse uh, object seemingly just kills us. Which does sort of lead me to believe that Yoko was trying to kill us herself and either, I mean, filled hers up and then died or it was like reflected back at her. I don't, I don't know. Thing is, though, we didn't die. But the last person that I killed did die, right? Like, I, th I think that lady was dead. And then I died like a few minutes later which wasn't like what happened to her. So I don't know, it seems like it might be a little different. But yeah, this game is pretty cool so far. I'm not gonna lie. And I'm seeing you guys also echo the uh, same sympathies here where like the fact that the game is essentially expecting me to like adjust settings within the game to actually be able to like beat its puzzles or, you know, kill the other characters is like, wow. That's pretty meta. That's pretty meta, bro. Yeah, I can already tell this game is going to be uh, going out of its way to fuck with me. <laughs> I think the the real question, though, is then like, how is this like possible, right? There's also some zero escape in this game for sure with me, like seemingly like hopping into Shogo here and making these decisions for him. And he doesn't know why. One of you guys also pointed out and it's something that I, I thought about as well. And I, I don't know when I was confronted by the storyteller at the end and he asked me how many people Shogo had killed, he said one, right? There was one dude, right, that I seemingly killed last video, but didn't actually press the R2 button myself. And that was the guy that brought me into darkness and I just skipped through the message box and he died. So is he referring to that one? Thing is, I can't remember if I did, this, did that for Yoko or not, if I actually pressed the R2 button for that. Actually, you know what, let me go back and check it. I I really don't remember if I if I did end up pressing it. I no, looking back, I did press it there. I did actually, because I was trying to figure out what to do, and then I kept noticing that the uh, the LT icon kept showing up in the top left. So the only one that I didn't press it for was that one guy. So is, this, is the game essentially suggesting that I'm the one killing these people, not Shogo? It does also make me wonder then, if I chose not to do that for any of the other characters, would it similarly have given me, a, you know, a, the same thing? Like, if I, if I chose not to kill that assistant to my boss guy, would he, would Shogo have killed him for me? Mm, I don't know, that's something to consider here. But anyway, last episode, uh, Xeno Nightshade said, uh, this game is like, if somebody took the best parts of Corpse Party, surgically removed the fan service, and fed it a cocktail of narrative steroids made from the genetic material of Dongaropa, Ace Attorney, and Zero Escape, then seasoned with just a little bit of 13 Sentinels, because I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I know, right? It's It's got a lot of different types of things in it, and I like it. I appreciate it. I feel like this is scratching an itch I'd forgotten that I had. And I will say it is nice going through a visual novel horror experience again and not have it have this weird fucking fan servicey shit that the Corpse Party series did. I never liked that. It could be funny sometimes, but most of the time it was just weird. So it's nice to just see a story that is actually pretty much taking itself really seriously here. So if it is uh, fucking with us a bit. But uh, Zeno and Aisha, thank you so much for your uh, truly accurate comment. Glad to hear that you're uh, enjoying this as, I, as much as I am. And it's that reason you are comment to the day. But yeah, uh, again, I just want to say uh, it's really cool seeing everyone really excited for this game that not that long ago, we n none of us had ever heard of, all right? Including you, you never heard of it either. And seeing that people are like super amped now for this, even just two episodes in for this series, gets me excited, it gets me amped too. So I don't want to know what the hell's going on as well. 
We're all gonna go through this crazy mystery together. See if we can't piece together what is actually uh, happening. Uh, you guys also need to point out, I will say, sort of what I was noticing too. It, it is kind of crazy how like quickly Shogo went from uh, not wanting to kill anybody to then just killing like five people in a row for a girl that he like barely knows. Isn't it for like a, like a month or something? But okay, so I'm assuming that the ones that have the screen broken mean I've done everything that there is to do in them. So, interesting. So what is even my choice here? The funny thing is up to this point, I feel like I haven't had any choice. Do I, am I not gonna press R2? Summary of previous events, Shogo Okie with, is with Yoko Fanaga, the Kishinabori Park, search for one of the seven mysteries of Hanjo. His interest in the occult starts to grow as he learns more about it from Yoko. Restart or resume? I guess resume? Uh, start from beginning. How is the right related to the mysteries? Something's happening to Yoko. I guess here? Whoa. Okay, so she's back to... Oh, no, she's not dead yet. I'm almost wondering... Maybe I just don't press R2 at all this time? Do I just keep thinking to myself? Wait. I don't think there was anything... I don't think there was actually anything to look at here, right? And yeah, okay, so this... This icon is now the... The story char one. I kind of had a feeling it was going to be something like that. Is there actually a skip button in this? Actually, I don't know if there is. Like a skip dialogue button. Which, if that is the case, that is kind of unusual for a visual novel. You always point over here, but I don't see anything out of the ordinary. So there it is again. Let's try. So looks really spooky. I doubt she's making this up. Damn it, did I miss it? All right. I'm not going to do it this time. I wonder if I have to just stand here then. Okay, I don't see anything. I should be frightened of. Maybe there's something there I can't see. No use, no condition to, to talk. Oh, wait, keep yelling her name. Huh? What? Is calling her name really going to help? I'm already yelling as hard as I can. Shouldn't look for what's causing this? There's nothing there. Yoko, hang in there, Yoko. Look at me. You're going to be okay. It's all right. There's nothing there. <laughs> Yoko! What? Why did it jump me back to the, the story chart? I guess that was the other decision. Now just hop to it. By the way, I see there's a moon up there. Oh uh, yeah, so you you will you will eventually uh slowly make your way to daytime here. Shogo cries Yoko's name in a desperate attempt to wake her, she lies unmoving on the ground. Will his please get through to her? What are the red there's like a little red icon up there? Is that it's just, this is the new thing. So I didn't have to go on a murderous rampage? Hmm? Or am I dead now? Huh? Oh good, you're awake. Wh what? I, um. Are you okay? You were so rattled and confused, I thought you'd really lost it. Wow, this game really... Yeah, man, the game really fucks with you here. This is probably... You probably could have gotten this choice at the beginning, right? You could have probably picked this path, but it's like... It, it actually... The fact that it gives you so much time that you have to wait there for so long, you feel like you're missing something, right? So when you see the, the, the press LT to push, you... I'm gonna bet most people probably picked that there at the start. That's why it makes you wait there so long, because it really is like, to get this other ch choice, you really have to work for it. Not to mention, you when you see the, the push thing, you don't have no idea what that is. Hell, actually, at this point, I'm still not even sure if I know what it is, other than it's seemingly killing them, but is it? I, I, I don't know. Do you feel dizzy? Have a headache? Or your humor's off balance? Wait, what did you say? I think I've heard that before. The one who said it earlier. Oh, right. That might have been it. My humors were off balance. What? Back there? You know, up like that because of your humors? Hmm. So it seems like she... Like, I didn't die, right? Or, well, oh, I, I didn't die. I mean, I, she didn't die, but I also didn't die. So I'm also like... And it seems like she's completely oblivious to this. So it's just making me start to th rethink the th what I thought before, where she was potentially trying to kill me. 
Maybe it's like me, like the Nico B guy, <laughs> right? The seemingly omniscient presence here that was the one that killed her then the first time? Yeah, I've heard that at this age, your humors, even being a little bit off can be fatal. I'm glad you're back to normal now. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause you so much trouble. But I really don't remember what happened. Hmm, sounds like what happened to me. Maybe this place is dangerous somehow. Oh. Oh. That's true. When I started the game, I, I essentially woke up like a, like the start of Dying Europa 2 and Kameda looking down at me. Hey, you really out of it, bro. <laughs> then suddenly Kameda turns into a cute girl. He's like, you okay, bro? And I'm like, ah! So it seems like maybe what happened to me happened to her as well. And it's also led to us because we both were like kind of out of it and lost our memories or something. Hmm. What? Are you backing out? I wonder if my, that weird fucking assistant guy's back there anywhere. Yeah, it just doesn't feel safe to me. I'm worried about you. Let's call off today's investigation. Come on. I just start feeling back to normal, too. Nope. Not happening. Go home. I'll even pay your cab fare, okay? I end up having to force a still protesting Yoko into a taxi. Even then, she still wouldn't stop complaining. So to placate her, I promised I'd search the park on my own for a little while longer. Oh. Assistant guy? You out? there whoa okay big jump forward in time interesting it seems like maybe now uh every time i uh i complete a section i actually come back here i wonder if there's a way to turn that off because i kind of like i kind of like the the flowing motion of just going from scene to scene instead of throwing me back here every time uh i don't think so i'm actually just curious if i go back to one of these like if I say, yeah, so resume, start from beginning, start from, so you, when you say resume, you're just choosing a, like a spot to load from, essentially. Yeah. What? What the, dude, I, what? Uh, I didn't, was this here before? Well, that was, I was, I was just, I was just testing saying, I wasn't going to actually see something. Huh? The hell is that? It's got light floating in midair. What? Is that? <gasps> oh shit! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! That's so freaky! Fuck you! Whoa! It's coming closer. It's another one of the seven mysteries. Looks like a will o' wisp, maybe. Was there anything like that in the seven mysteries? Oh shit, freak me the fuck out. So I'm gonna come closer when I do that, okay. Is this guy actually a curse bearer after all? But that wouldn't make sense. I didn't get like anything from his his bullshit. Oh, I think it's this. Well, walking along a road near Honji at night, one might spot a hazy lantern light up ahead, despite there being no one around. Following it will cause it to go out suddenly when getting near. But just when one fears the darkness might swallow them up, another light will appear further ahead, as if guiding the one who sees it. Some say the flame is benevolent, leading people to their home, their homes, while others believe it a monster leading people astray. Some even believe it's a vengeful spirit of someone that died, luring the lost to the land of the dead. Yeah, oh, and the, the ever-burning lantern one was the, um, I think that was the one that lured me into darkness that one time. Yeah. What the fuck? Huh? creep me out, but sting put for now. I should probably leave it be. Uh, uh, uh. What? Oh, I can actually talk to him about it. What's up with that light? What's up with that weird ball of light? Say your curse. Whatever do you mean? I'm afraid I see no such thing. Huh? But it's right. Oh. Huh? It's, it's gone. It's right there. I see. Seems you have become the mark of another curse bearer. Oh. 
Really now? Huh. Is it going to be something like me, myself, the Nico B that I wrote my name in there as like another curse bearer? Because like clearly this guy wasn't, right? I got nothing from him. Oh, I have no discussion to talk about there? What? Is it, so is it possible that light was my curse or something? And that's the one that's maybe been killing others? But I only I didn't see it in any of the other cutscenes. I'm actually almost tempted to go back and see if it shows up. I just didn't see it. I've really looked around though. Like some of those I mean I I guess I, I missed it there, but like, especially the one where where I was where I had the deal with her. Like I really fucking looked around that area because I was really struggling to figure out what it wanted me to do. And I did not see this. Wow. Okay, I'm glad I actually checked that again, though. That was interesting. Um, okay, so so we called a cab. It's better summary of You managed to persuade her by offering her to a social zone. All right. 5 a.m. Storyteller music? Music in this game is really good, by the way. In further news... What? <gasps> Before dawn today, a police officer on patrol discovered a man collapsed in Sumida City Park. Oh. The man was taken to the hospital, but his death was confirmed shortly after. Investigations are still underway. Police suspect a connection to the other unexplained deaths found in the area at around the same time. <laughs> There's the title drop. Oh my god. In the fucking third episode. Wow. So that was that that's what we saw on the TV at the start, right? Although I thought it said he, his body was like fished out of the water or something. I actually might go back and check that just to make absolutely certain. Yeah, there it is. Gen Kobayashi. That's the same guy that did the uh, artwork for uh, The World Ends With You. Oh, man. I was, I was not going to lie. That's a good towel drop, actually. The Rite of Resurrection. Well done in your efforts thus far. This brings Shogo Okie's story to a close. Ah, but this is not the end. Far from it. In fact, this is where the story finally begins. The roots of the three protagonists have now been unlocked. Oh, really now? Harue! I wonder if it's Harue or Sh Haru. Harue? Yeah, pro probably that. Harue Shigima, a woman who lost her son when he was kidnapped and murdered. Oh, this guy. Tetsuo Susumi. The Chief Inspector of the 1st Investigative Division, who is looking into the death of an officer in the line of duty. Yako Sakazaki, also yet known as Yuki Takamiya for, for 30 Sentinels, a high school girl who wants to bring her friend back from the dead, a girl who died in a suspicious suicide. Each of them is burdened with circumstances that leaves them no choice but to seek the right of resurrection. Following these three storylines will reveal the full nature of all that is occurring. With that, please enjoy the continuation of this tale. I mean, the funny thing is, though, we've already seen, like... Seemingly, like this is just gonna end in fucking death, right? For anyone who even manages to do this. Wow, really? So this, this, is, just, this is just how Sugar's story ends? Huh... The fuck? So her? Him or her? I might want to go with here. No, this isn't exactly the same. Yeah, I was right. It says, so I'm looking back on what was said in the, uh, at the start of the game. It said, earlier this morning, the body of a drowned man was discovered at a park in Sumida City. Piece of identified the body is Shogokie, a 25-year-old who worked at a company in the area. As signs of a story were found, the Sumida police suspect foul play and have launched an investigation. Yeah, it's actually not, it is not the same as the, as the death that, 
uh, we saw at the start of the game. So, okay. But, still dead. Still dead. Actually, as far as I can tell, we have not come across the... That actual, uh, news story yet either. Which almost makes you wonder, maybe I'm already dead or something. Did I double die in this game? All right, well, I guess we have a decision now. Um, I get, and I'm, I'm assuming these red dots, that's, the red dot must just mean, like, something new. Let's start from the top. So let's start with, uh, Haruei Shi Shigema. Not dreams. When the son of Haruei Shigema was kidnapped, a botched investigation by the police resulted in the child's murder. One year later, Haruei has hired a private investigator to help resolve the unsettled case. Late at night, while speaking to the detective at her home, something strange suddenly appears. Okay. May those who mocks fire perish in flame. Kill them. Kill them! The flame bearers. Kill them! You have acquired the power of the cursing stone, the haunting clappers. Okay, so that was hers. You can use it to kill those with fire or a fire starting device on their person. Right, so what was this one? As the evening bell rings in Ereccio, a near present day Shumoku Bridge, a night watchman patrols the dark streets and announces his presence by shouting warnings about fires, all while striking his wooden clappers. But tonight, the sound of another set of clappers answers back. He curiously claps his clappers together again. Clack, clack. The echo answers again, but no matter how hard he searches for the source of the second pair of clappers, he never finds it. Some say it was the work of a mischievous Tanuki or Kitsune, while others say it was a warning from the spirit of someone who lost their life in a terrible fire. Damn, this fucking dude. Arrgh. Red, red, red. Everything is dyed crimson. My home is burned to the ground. It's hot. So, so hot. I must call for help, but I cannot speak. My throat must be burned up from the smoke. No, I think I'm already on fire. That's right. I'll just use the clappers. Clack, clack. Is anybody there? Clack, clack. Why is no one coming? I'm going to burn to death. How did it come to this? All right, her. It must be the work of that vixen who appeared suddenly and enchanted my lord, that witch. Those hauntingly cold eyes had my lord dancing in the palm of her hand. Perhaps I was also taken in by her. How many innocent people did I lure in under orders? This must be karma. The sound of a heavy bell. Feels like my head may sp will split open. All right, the evening bell. That must be the... No one can hear the sound of my clappers. Got to do it louder. Clack, clack. And interesting. And, they, and seemingly this, this woman here is the one to acquire it, right? This vixen, femme fatale. A murderous impulse seep, seeps into my soul like thick black tar. Now, kill. Can you hear it, Curse Bearer? You so strongly desires the right. Kill them. Haruhi Shigima. I assume it's pronounced Haruhi because Haru, we already, there's already a name for Haru and that's just without the E, so. Back with me, ma'am. Can't say I understand what just happened, but it certainly seems to have put you in a good mood. This might be the first time I've ever seen you really smile. Sweet dreams. The look on her face. Housewife. If looks could kill. Housewife Harai Shigima. Alright, now we actually get her backstory here. Haraway is a housewife who resides in a manor near Shimoku Bridge. Her 11-year-old son, Shuichi, was kidnapped and murdered about a year ago. The death was a result of a mistake on the part of the detective assigned to the case. A mistake which enraged the kidnapper and had, cut, had him cut off all contact with the police, leaving no room for negotiation. Was it Richter? Was he the detective here? This it was covered up and Shuichi's killer remains at large, leading the aggrieved Haraway to call on the sources of a private investigator, Richter Kai, to uncover the truth. No, okay, it's not him. That He's a private investigator, gotcha. The Shigama family came from a line of samurai who built their residence in Hanjo during the Edo period. They assumed important positions in the police force following the Meiji Revolution, thereby protecting their family's elevated status. Even today, many in the Shigama line work as police bureaucrats and senior police officers. Haraway's father sits in the upper echelons of the National Police Agency, and her husband, adopted into the Shigama clan through an arranged marriage, is also a highly respected agent official. However, as her family prioritizes work above else, all else, it wasn't long before Haraway's marriage grew cold. Though she wants for nothing, she is isolated from her neighbors and withdrawn from society. 
Seeing her son grow into a young man gave Haraway a purpose in life, but it was cut short by the kidnapping incident. Following the incident, Haraway spent many days in a deep depression, breaking into sudden fits of shouting and wandering around in the middle of the night. Her cheerful, loving disposition faded away, and she took to making snide remarks at her husband, which only further soured the relationship. A few months ago, Haraway's husband was transferred to another area for work and now rarely returns home, with Haraway left to live in the large, empty mansion alone. As a housekeeper who has been with the family for a long time, Comes in to take care of all the housework. Haru has nothing but time on her hands. No. Not dreams. Sounds like something I might want to hear about. There's stuff on here. Hanging scroll. An old hanging scroll. I don't know who painted it. It's been hanging here ever since I was before I was born. An arrangement of flowers. We bring in someone to do it. I don't even know what the flowers are called. A stereo unit with separated speakers designed for home use. My husband insisted on buying one, even though he isn't one to listen to music often. What the hell is that? Well, I'll be damned. Is that what I think it is? Goodness, you made me jump. It's just a silly little sticker my son got from somewhere or other. He put it up just before... Well, you know what happened. I still can't bring myself to take it down. Let me take a closer look. I knew it! It's Head Henjo from way back in set number one! This is a real collector's item. Excuse me? It's a, it's a freaking rooster! He looks so cool, does he have a jacket on? Don't tell me you've never heard of the Mockingbirds. The what? They're the hottest new craze. Cute little birds dressed up like rough and tumble delinquents. I've never heard of them, but it certainly seems to matter to you. The best part is nobody knows who made them. They just start showing up around town, and soon enough, they won everybody's hearts. The story goes that they're made by some anonymous artist who covertly leaves them behind in specific locations. No one knows when or where they'll show up next. They're basically an urban legend of sorts. To think one would turn up here, of all places. This is a good sign, I'm sure of it. Oh, well that's... nice. Mockingbird discovered. I got a achievement, Mocking Chick. Is this like a collectible? These popular bird mascots seem to... Oh, it is. It is. They seem to pop up everywhere. Nobody knows who the legendary artist is behind these quirky birds, but they quickly become popular for their surreal yet oddly cute designs. Be in the right place at the right time in Hanjo, and you might be able to find all 20 of them scattered around. Well, chance collecting them all will bring good good luck. I'll be able to make a wish upon the Dragon Balls. Oh, it even gives you a hit here. Wait until you feel like yourself again. Detectives in private eye. The excited detective, a ringing telephone booth. Cool. Okay. This is the first one on here, right? Yeah. Nice TV. A color television. Father bought one as soon as it hit the market. He likes to have the latest gadgets. Unlike the latest models, there's no remote control. We've had it for a long time. Back when it was new, we all gathered around it and marveled at it as a family. But with father and my husband being away so often, it quickly fell into disuse. The guest table. I don't know where father got this old thing from, but I've never liked it. A fax machine! A fax machine. It could send images to other places along the telephone network. I don't really know how it works. Most houses don't have one. I rarely find a use for it. The telephone. This mansion is a private line. Hmm. Oh, hey, I can look up here, too. The lights. The chandelier is the only thing in here. That's my choice. It's my favorite part of the room. A private investigator I hired. A friend told me about him. They said he's not very well known, but he's good at what he does. When I first visited his office in Noda City, I saw how he dressed. I could hardly believe he was a detective. But after talking to him for a while, I changed my mind. He says some strange things at times, but I, he seems like the reliable sort. The eccentric man that Shogo Oki ran into at Haonji Bridge. Uh, oh, that's the first one, yeah. Uh, Richter is actually a private investigator with an office. I've taken on a request from Haruo Shigima to investigate the unsolved kidnapping and murder of... Her son, he gets caught up in the events surrounding the Rite of Resurrection. Once a police officer, Richter was racked with guilt over the police's inability to help those in need, and quit the force to start his own private investigation firm. 
However, his soft-hearted nature leads him to take on too many cases and has put his office in dire financial straits. How he is still in business is a mystery, with some whispering that he's a wealthy person, or a wealthy patron, is keeping him afloat. Richter studied alongside Detective June Ario at the police academy. Oh, really? June Ario is this guy. Okay. Somewhat surprisingly, given his outlandish clothing and mannerisms, Richter excels at covert uh, investigations and tailing his targets. He proudly refers to himself as an investigator extraordinaire, though only ever succeeds at impressing himself. Richter's biggest source of happiness is nuzzling his pet female albino parakeet, Ernestine, which he keeps in his office. He also enjoys collecting mockingbird stickers, a popular line of merchandise featuring birds inexplicably dressed like delinquents, and can be frequently cited searching around town for them. A lot and about Richter typically leaves the office, and more importantly, Ernestine, in, in the care of Amamori, a junior high schooler who volunteered to assist Richter after being involved in a previous case. The Azure Heron Agency, Richter Kai's private investigation firm in Kamata, Oda City. Originally, Kai thought to give it a simple name like Kai's Detective Agency, but upon hearing that people are more likely to pick names listed in front of the phone book alphabetically, he decided to pick a name starting with an A, thus the Azure Heron Agency was established. However, it's questionable whether the Heron, a bird of somewhat ominous significance, is an effective symbol for attracting cu customers. Even his own assistant has referred to the name as confusing at best. After all, rather than a Azure Heron, Rector keeps a white parrot as a pet and dresses not in blue, but mostly in white. If there was a symbolic connection to be made here, it should have been lost in all but Richter himself. A private investigator also knows a privatized detective operates of their own agency. Yeah, so there's no formal qualifications necessary to become a private investigator. Many are retired police agents or detectives due to similarities between the work involved. At a glance, the private investigation firms and inquiry offices might look similar, but they carry out different types of investigations. Inquiry offices specialize in conducting credit card checks on businesses, while private investigators are generally involved in tailing persons of interest and gathering or gaining information surreptitiously. My heart's still racing. This is it. My chance. And long last. Let me bring you up to speed. We were in the middle of a chat when you suddenly started spacing out. And the whole time, you were grinning to yourself like you just won the lottery. Care to tell me what that was all about? Well, where to start? Hmm, interesting. Very interesting. So, the Haunting Clapper's curse echo appeared out of nowhere. Told you how to perform the rite of resurrection and gave you the curse you s you'll need to do it. Have I got that right? That's right. So it's all real. Honestly, I still find it hard to believe. But I guess I have to now. I saw that curse soon appear in your hand myself. It looked like it popped clean out of thin air. With evidence that clear, there's no denying that there's some supernatural force at work. This guy just kind of rolls with it, doesn't he? I don't think you quite understand. Oh? This isn't about evidence, and it isn't about belief. It's more than that. I know it's real. The moment the curse appeared, I knew everything before it. It even said a word. It was already there in my head, as clear as day. You just knew, huh? It was etched under my soul, along with the curse echo's resentful memories. So I can feel it, what it was like. Dying like they did, hundreds of years ago. Wreathed in flame, writhing in pain as my flesh blackens and my blood boils. I can feel it. All the agony, all the rage. It fills me with bloodlust. I think I need to kill someone. Anyone will do. Just as long as they're carrying fire. I see. That could be a problem. You think so? From what I know of you. I was sure you'd see it as an opportunity. The stronger the desire to resurrect someone, the stronger the urge to kill. That's how it, see how it seems to me, anyway. Good grief. Talk about a spanner in the works. I say we take stock for a moment. Remind ourselves where we've come from and where we're going. That might be a good idea. Yeah. So it's interesting. She's 
So he was someone who was fed up with the inadequacies of his agency, and she's someone who lost a son due to inadequate pe- police work, right? So they have a very, they have a common ground here. In addition to the fact that, you know, she's, he's seemingly working with her as well. That was a clock up there. I didn't see that. Swinging the pendulum that goes through the, through the room. Feels livelier than usual when with Richter here. Usually, it's just me. That's what you hired me for, ma'am. To look into your son's kidnapping last year. To uncover the truth behind the abduction and murder of Shuichi Shigema. Oh, yes. I remember. They never did find the one who did it. That's what I'm here about today. In fact, kind of you to let me drop by so late, by the way. I've been turning over every last stone, and I've come up with a grand total of... One lead. So you said. As far as the police are concerned, it's a cold case. But I've managed to make some headway. I remember. You were told just about to tell me. The Shigama kidnapping overview. A kidnapping and murder case that took place at Hanjo Sumida around one year ago. Haruwe Shigema's son, Shuichi, age 11, was kidnapped on his way home from school with a ransom being demanded that same evening. Initially, the kidnapping was thought of as a simple extortion scheme, but when it came to light that the Shigema family was closely tied to the police, and Shuichi was in fact the grandson of a senior official, it was quickly assumed that the perpetrator was acting upon a grudge against the police force. The kidnapping was treated as a direct attack against the good name of the police, and a large-scale investigation was launched that used the best equipment available to trace phone calls. This made it all the more embarrassing when they were unable to catch the culprit, losing the public's confidence. The culprit grew cocky, relentlessly mocking the police force. After three days of failure after failure, Harari reached a breaking point. Spurred by concern for her son, she resolved to hand over the ransom money as fast as possible, but her husband and father, who held the prestige of the police in high regard, refused, saying that they would not let the criminal win by giving in to their demands. The increasingly frantic detective assigned to the case lost his temper when the criminal called to give an ultimatum, causing the culprit to never make contact again. Another week passed and Shuichi's body was found floating in the Sumida River. Suichi's death could be largely ascribed to the police's incompetence, but this is ultimately a covered up with astringent media embargoes. The investigation was never closed, but the case has long gone cold. Yikes. Oh, there he is. The only son of Haruo Shigema, he was kidnapped and murdered one year ago, his body was discovered floating in the Sumida River. Suichi was a conscientious, brave young boy who was determined to protect his mother, Haruo, amid his father's frequent absences. He dreamed of becoming a police officer and displayed diligence and an, and an impressive sense of responsibility from a young age, likely due to being raised in an extremely strict environment. Born in the early 70s, he spent his days immersed in various activities and studies, including playing piano, learning the abacus, taking English lessons, and training in kendo. Shuichi's tendency to put other people's needs over his own meant he died without ever telling his classmates how much he longed for them, all to go out on a hunt for mockingbird stickers. Aww. Depressing. I suppose there's not much point going over the kidnapping itself. No, I'm very familiar. Then I'll leave that for the files to cover and just confirm a few things about the case. The police trace the culprit's calls back to... Let's see here. Northern Ioko River, here in Sumida City. It's quite a wide area. That's right. In the end, they never managed to nail down exactly where the calls were coming from. But it was almost certainly the same location that Shuichi was being held captive. So Shuichi's voice could be heard during the killer's calls. Northern Yoko River is quite a distance from Shuichi's normal school commute. Factory in that he was seen at school, but went missing before he arrived at his house. It's likely that he was abducted by car on his route home. Maybe, but... Exactly. Shuichi was a clever boy. He never would have gotten to a car with a stranger. That's right. I was very firm about that. I know he understood too. I even saw him warning the other children. It's possible they forced him into the car. The only issue there is, there weren't any witnesses to the kidnapping. You can't bundle someone into a car with that many students around and not be noticed. But nobody came forward to say they saw anything suspicious. So, did they target him at some other time, or somewhere away from his usual route? 
Both of those seem a little far-fetched. Which raises the question, how did the kidnapper pull it off? The police never managed to find an answer. In the end, they decided that the kidnapper must have gotten lucky. Well, why not turn the problem on its head? The kidnapper managed to convince Shuichi to get into their car. But how? The only thing that makes sense to me is if they were somebody that he would have reason to trust. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. A teacher, perhaps, or a relative, or somebody else that he knew. But all the adults Shuichi knew had alibis. And the police checked them all thoroughly. They did, huh? No one throws numbers at a problem like the cops. But what if it wasn't someone he knew? Or rather, what if the culprit disguised themselves as a police officer? And that would explain why he didn't find them suspicious. The Shikama family has close ties with the police after all. He would have had a reason to trust them. He might be right. But surely, they couldn't have. Well, there's a problem with the theory. You'd be surprised how much police officers stand out. That's sort of the point, after all. They're meant to be the a visible deterrent against crime. But here's another interesting little bit of trivia I happen to know. When you ask people to imagine someone suspicious, nobody pictures women or children. Even kids who've been warned about stranger danger often subconsciously expect that danger to look like an adult man. Besides, Shuichi was the sort of boy who wanted to be a police officer when he grew up. He must have had a very strong sense of right and wrong. That's right. Wait, surely you can't mean. Now you're getting it. If, say, a young woman approached Shuichi asking for help, what would he have done? If someone like that said they were lost and asked him for directions, would he have gotten into a car? He might have. My husband always told him that a man had a duty to watch out for women and children. You could certainly argue that kind of attitude is outdated nowadays. But if Shuichi believed it, then we might have something here. Then you think the culprit was a young woman. But it was a man's voice on the phone. She might have been an accomplice. Or maybe she didn't even realize she was being used. If anything, that would explain why she hasn't come forward. She herself might not realize she had anything to do with the case. Really now? I mean, didn't have anything to do with the case, but she would- I mean, if she was keeping up with the news, she would have known that that boy was the one she talked to. So the question is, did anybody see Shuichi speaking with a young woman on the day of his disappearance? See, what I said about people's biases, that goes for witnesses too. And I figure that maybe, if I started asking new questions, I might get some new answers. So I spent my day asking around Shuichi's school route, seeing if anyone had seen something. And one man thought he had. Do you mean he saw it happen? Well, I can't say that for sure yet. It turned out he wanted something from me, so he asked if we could talk in private. Several hours earlier. Alright, this should do. There's no one around. We can speak in confidence. <laughs> Excuse me. What was your name again? Jonoichi. Got it. Well, Jonoichi, I'm all ears. Just so we're on the same page. You're a private detective investigating Suichi Shigama's kidnapping. Do I have that right? Of course. What else do I look like? How should I know what a private detective looks like? <sighs> Forget it. Look, I'll tell you straight. My life is in danger. I need your help. You'll excuse me if that caught me a little off guard. Let me ask you straight. Who is trying to kill you? A student called Michio Shirashi. Interesting. A schoolgirl, eh? Sounds like you've been naughty. It's nothing like that. Girl, she's a murderer. 
I'm the only one who knows, but I saw what she did. Monsieur Shirashi, I saw her kidnap Shuichi Shigama. Come again? I saw her talk to him on the street and lead him away. I didn't think much of it at the time, but then he went missing. Is that the girl from, uh, the, the schoolgirl? Oh, actually, I actually don't have her thing in here. I think that is her. I think that's the, the girl that we also have the option to pick here. She murdered him. I'm sure of it. At least she's got something to do with it. That's what you're here for, isn't it? You can't let her get to me. If that's true, you've been sitting on some valuable information. Why didn't you tell anybody? Well, you see. If you can't explain that, I don't have any reason to believe you. She told me she'd kill me if I spoke a word! You're telling me a schoolgirl had you scared for your life. So you've been sitting on that all this time, and you think she's coming for you now that you've spilled the beans? Yes! That's it! I exactly! I beg you, don't let her get me! Arrest her! I'm telling you, she's a demon! Well, you seem to believe what you're saying. But it just doesn't add up. How could a schoolgirl have a fully grown man so terrified? You don't know what she can do. She'll... She'll curse me! Curse you? I I'm sorry, but you're losing me here. It's true! Her, her house... It's... I forget it! Why do I even bother? You seem dubious enough to believe me, but I should have known you'd never understand! Enough! I'll find someone else to help me! Hey! Hmm. And that's about the long and short of it. I... I can hardly believe it. At the time, I thought his mention of curses was just crazy talk. But I'm starting to see that there might have been more to it. Then, if we can just find that girl... Curse or no curse, if she was with Shuichi on the day of the kidnapping, then there's a good chance she knows something. On top of that, I did some digging on the man I spoke to. His full name's Kohai Jonuichi. He's a teacher at Komagata High School here in Sumida. A teacher? Then the schoolgirl. Is one of his students? I think that's very likely. Hmm. I must wonder if he was like... I don't know, having an affair or something with her. At last, we've got a lead. Hopefully it'll be the breakthrough we're looking for. You know, we still need to figure out exactly what you want me to do. Tell you what, why don't I tell you what I've found, and then we can make a decision. Alright. Okay, and... But the Rite of Resurrection? The Rise of Resurrection, huh? I read about that in an occult magazine the other day. Apparently some old books showed up recently with all the gory details. And they say the rite can be found somewhere in Hanjo. I remember the first time you told me about that. It felt like... Like my prayers had been heard. Like I had hope. Real hope. For the first time. Ever since that awful day I've wondered. What if... What if I hadn't sent him to school? What if I just paid the ransom? Not a day goes by when I don't think that if I'd done something differently, Shuichi would still be alive. You can't blame yourself, ma'am. It was the culprit's fault, not yours. Though I know that won't help any. Grief is funny like that. I'm guessing that's why you're after the right. Guess I didn't need to ask. It's written all over your face. I could tell how much he meant to you. But, and this is a big but... If this right is the real deal, using it will mean killing someone and stealing their soul. Is that a problem? If it comes to that, I'm afraid I'll have to stop you. Oh, that's a shame. A shame, huh? That's all. I thought, if I'm going to be competing with other curse bearers, then your detective skills might come in useful. You realize you're talking about ending someone's life, right? Don't you see an issue with that? I think any parent in my position would happily kill for a chance like this. That's so, is it? Dear, oh dear. 
What have I gotten myself into? If it makes you uncomfortable, that you won't have to get my any blood on your hands yourself. I don't need you to kill the other curse bearers. I only need you to find them. I won't be party to murder, ma'am. Not even for a client. I'll pay you. That's a shame. I'll pay you. How much can I give you to change your mind? Sorry, ma'am, but not everyone has a price. I've got my policies, and I stick to them. I see. I didn't realize you were so stubborn. Let me say, though, it's not like I don't get what you're going through. As long as you're not killing anyone with your own hands, maybe I can help you out. What do you have in mind? Well, how about stealing someone else's curse stone after they filled it with its soul dregs? Oh, okay. So there you go. So that's why she was after Shogo. That, wa that way. If that was all you were after, then I could lend you my services guilt-free. It'll be interesting to see how this ends up crossing over, because I'm, since I'm playing through, right, these different scenarios that are seemingly coinciding with each other, right? But I'm making decisions in each one, right? So it does sort of mean that I think when I'm in control of them, events aren't going to play out the same way. Like, I doubt I'm going to go meet Shogo and then fucking get murdered. I, I think, though I might kill him and see it basically from her point of view, or I'm fucking counting down. If the other curse bears want to kill each other, that's their business. I'm not trying to be a hero here. I guess there's no guarantee a stolen curse stone will work, but we can worry about that later. Well then, I suppose we have a deal. Although, what if I stole a curse stone using my curse? Would you disapprove? That would void our contract, ma'am. Just warning you now. My. Well, <laughs> you tell that to her when she fucking killed me in that one ending. Before we go any further, why don't you tell me about the curse of yours? The Haunting Clappers, was it? That's one of the seven mysteries of Anjo, if I remember correctly. That's right. The original story did happen somewhere near here, I think. I'm sure I remember hearing that. In that case, my money would be on all the curse bearers being somewhere in Hanjo. Our first move should be to narrow them down. Some of them are bound to try and come for you first. We'll need to be ready. The curse makes their bearers more willing to kill, so an attack could come from anywhere. That sounds... sensible. And if I remember correctly... Your haunting clappers can set people on fire, but only if they have a naked flame or a lighter on their person. Is that right? That's right. In olden times, wooden clappers were used to warn people of fire. I'm guessing it punishes those who don't heed the warning. It seems like a good curse to have. It's simple and straightforward enough to use. Although it's hard to say how it stacks up without knowing what else is on the table. You really think it's that good? The target can't do much to throw it off, and has a nice long activation window. It's big that it works on lighters, too. Just slip one into your target's pocket. And say that condition were already fulfilled before they even knew you were there, they wouldn't even know what hit them. Maybe I won't have to actually use it. I could just tell someone I could, and they'd have to do what I said. Threats could work, although without any proof, it'll come down to how convincing you can be. If only you could use the curse, then back out at the last second. At the last second? What an interesting idea. I have a lighter right here. We could try it now. That's an interesting proposition. But maybe not. I'm not quite crazy enough to make myself a guinea pig. <laughs> yeah, really. Oh, I, I see. You're an odd one, ma'am, if you don't mind me saying. And I don't think it's just the curse. You flatterer. <laughs> Shh. It's not flattery, ma'am. Are you not listening to me? As for what we do next, first of all, I think you should stay indoors. Try not to do anything spontaneous or outside of your normal routine. Right. Then have you decided what you want me working on? Oh, interesting. Help me with the right. Investigate the kidnapping. Hmm. Investigate the kidnapping. Finally. Finally I have a lead. I need to know what happened to my son. Your wish is my command, ma'am. 
I'll focus all my efforts on, to, on looking into the kidnapping. Although, something just occurred to me. You can't investigate the matter at night, can you? At least until the sun rises. Could you search for the other curse bearers? <laughs> Alright. I see how it is. So that's, that's what he was doing out there. Well, I'd be happy to help. Odds are good that the other curse bearers are also working by night. Anyone they kill under the cover of darkness won't be discovered until sunrise. I bet they'll be trying to do as much as they can before morning comes. So it's settled then. I'll look into the other curse bearers by night. And once the city wakes up and I can start asking questions, I'll investigate the kidnapping as well. I'll even try and find Miss Shirashi as part of the bargain. Thank you. That's more than enough. Now then. I should get to work. There's only so much time before sunrise. I'll call you if I find out anything new. You stay here and keep a lookout. All right. There's no telling what kinds of curses you might find out on the streets tonight. Don't go outside if you can help it. And try to be ready for anything. I will. Well, if that's all, I should be going. Hmm, okay. Interesting. This is really, it's, it's really good. Now I'm like, I, I feel a very strong desire to like read a lot of like the extra fluff text right about the cases and stuff too. All right, let's uh have a little look see duel. A nice thought. Despite having obtained the curse of the hunting clappers, Harue Shigema is determined to use the right of resurrection by stealing the remaining curse stones. She instructs, instructs her private investigator Richter to find out the other curse bearers. 1 a.m. She give him a mansion reception room. All right, she has not left. It's been almost an hour since Richter left. He promised he'd call me if anything happened, but he hasn't. So all I can do is wait and wait. The flowers put me at ease, just a little. That old hang scroll seems far too often to feel anything from it now. See the same thing? Should I put a record on? No, it's too late for that. I'm not in the mood for music anyway. No, she's saying different stuff. Oh, she can't look at this again, though. There's nothing on at this hour. I see no point in turning it on. Ticking seems so loud, it just goes to show how quiet it is. My husband used to complain that it was too dark, but I rather like the gloom. Come to think of it, I never offered him any tea. Not that I ever learned how to make it. <laughs> it's a fax machine, I really find a use for it. I don't know anybody else who owns one. I'm waiting for Richter to contact me, but he hasn't. I got a newspaper. What's this? A newspaper? It must have fallen off the chair. It's a newspaper. I only leave them here and in here for the guests. I hardly ever read them myself. I don't think I've taken the time to go over one in years, in fact. Well, it's not like I have any anything better to do. Like society articles. Looks like the city's biggest problem right now is pollution. I remember how the air and water used to be even more polluted. The river was covered in scum from all the sewage and industrial waste, and it stinks so badly it make my eyes water. Eventually people started getting sick, and it couldn't be ignored anymore. Fortunately, it's gotten better since then. Although the air around the industrial district is still filthy with gas and smog. Uh, the economy articles. All sorts of articles about the current state of the economy. Now that the post-war boom has passed its peak, we're moving into the era of large corporations. It's about 220 to 230 yen to the dollar. Manufacturing is on the rise, and exports are healthy. The dollar is down from its height, and people are saying it could fall further. There's no denying how much the standard of living has improved in the past few years. It's common to own a car and television now. Supermarkets are better stocked than ever. The fucking boom, baby. The boom of the Japanese 80s. Not everyone has more spending money to go around. People are coming up with all kinds of new diversions. Seems like only yesterday that people were flocking to the arcades to shoot aliens. 
But now we have these enormous theme parks and gaming machines that plug straight into our televisions. Everyone's talking about superhero series, foreign films, and movies based on the latest bestseller. Back in my day, fusion rock and folk music were all the rage. But now it's all about city pop and idols. I find it hard to care about that sort of thing anymore. Education. Everyone attends high school now, even girls. Universal education policy, they call it. The country's gotten rich enough that every child can go to school. Education is the backbone of modern society. If you want to work for a good company, you have to get into a good university. With more people in the running than ever, the competition to get into those universities has gotten fierce, though. The new generation is rebelling. Schoolyard violence and delinquency are on the rise. But my boy was too sensible to get mixed up in any of that. I don't want to read it anymore. It'll only remind me of him. Oh. Oh. That one's actually the... Completed. Okay. Look at the television articles. I don't really watch much television. Feels as if all the information in the world gets passed through that little black box. The father stopped them from reporting on the kidnapping back when it happened. I was glad about that. Less fuss. Now the com comedy boom is over, all the comedians are flocking to other genres. The call seems rather popular at the moment. Look at these, all these paranormal specials. There's one thing Hanjo never wants for the terrific crimes. They found a police officer dead in a local park just the other day. A lot of my family are in the police. Hope it wasn't anybody I knew. I don't read the news anymore. Not since last year. It brings back bad memories. Suicide at a local high school. Oh, I remember that. A high school girl jumped off a roof about a week ago. She was bullied, I think. Or maybe it was something about exam pressure. What? But... No. This can't be right. Her name... Michio Shirashi from Kamagata High School. Oh. It... can't be. Michio Shirashi, the same girl who witnessed my son's kidnapping, committed suicide last week. But that means... Mr. Jonoichi was terrified of someone who, who already died. Is that what he meant by a curse? I can't work this out on my own. Maybe Richter will know. I want to call. Oh, I haven't left it off the hook, have I? Hmm. Before we do that, let me check these other things here. Although with everyone flocking to the city, land prices are skyrocketing. Nowadays, most people can only dream of how home ownership. The city center are going to be nothing but apartments before long. Hmm. I'm not exactly a businesswoman, so this all feels like another world to me. I hear the big new thing is someone, some mascot in line of delinquent birds. Mockingbirds, I think it's called. Is that what Richter was talking about? Trends seem to have such short li shelf lives now, with how quickly the times are changing. I think I'm just too old to keep up anymore. It's young people who are leading the way with their modern worldviews. My generation will only fall further behind. Okay. Was that the same girl? I don't remember. Unfortunately, I can't... Actually, I should have checked when I was on the story chart before. Now, yeah, unfortunately, I'll end up having to redo this if I have to look again. Just check that next time I'm uh, on the, the thing. Wait for Richter to contact me, but he hasn't. Make sure the receiver's on the hook. He'll ring as soon as he calls. Ah! That must be him. Hello, Sh Shigama Residence. Two AM Come I got a bridge. Richter called me out to meet him, and we came here to come I got a bridge. Victor, there's something I need to tell you. Funny, I was just thinking the same thing. Ron come I got a bridge over the Sumida River. There's a highway on one side and a freeway on the other, but they're both deserted this late at night. One of the bridges spanning the Sumida River, completed in 1927 as part of the reconstruction effort following the Great Kanto Earthquake, is notable both for its distinctive blue arches and the cutting edge. For the time, techniques used in its construction. There are many bridges stretching across the Sumida River, each boasting a unique structural form and design. Hmm. Is there any ghosts? Weird 
floating lights out anywhere? Anything? Sumita River. The water's filthy and horrid, but at night when it's still, it's still, it looks almost peaceful. Can I ask you something, ma'am? Is the Sumita River what you Hanjo folks picture when you think of home? I couldn't say. All I can tell you is that I can hardly stand the sight of it. Right. Should have guessed. That's where his, her son was found, right? This is where they found him, after he went missing. All alone, floating in that horrible water. All I can think is how scared he must have been. How cold he must have been. What did he ever do to deserve something so awful? I've come here every day since then. And I pray to the river to give him back. To give me back my son. Day after day after day. You know, in olden times, people believed rivers mocked where our world met the next. So the act of crossing flowing water had a huge amount of spiritual significance. Back when Edo was founded, the people of Chuo saw the Sumida River the same way. They associated the far side of the river with the afterlife. That same place would later become Hanjo. All their fear and revulsion accumulated there and took root. But then the Ryugoku Bridge sprang up after the Great Fire of Mirake, Mireki, and just like that, Hanjo was part of the city too. And as it turned from farmland into a town, the people surrounded it with man-made rivers and crisscrossed it with canals and waterways. Were those to prevent flooding? That's what I was told. They were, but that's not all they were for. Their other purposes was to contain all the corruption that had built up on that far shore and stop it from leaking through to our side of the Great Divide. Officially, they were a physical barrier, but unofficially, they were a spiritual one, too. So, if I have this right, are you saying that Hanja was a place where the real will meets the afterlife? Exactly. That's why the Rite of Resurrection is here, rather than anywhere else. I'm sure of it. And it's probably why the Seven Mysteries and their curses have survived to the modern day. And I guess I would make this spot we're standing now, right over the water, the border between life and death. If there ever was a place where bringing back the dead might be possible, I reckon it's here. It's funny that you mentioned praying to the river. That might have done more than you think. Is that supposed to make me feel better? Just thinking aloud, ma'am. Hmm. Well, it's a nice thought. Assume it a river. A Class A river that is part of the Arakawa River system, which runs through the much of eastern Tokyo and empties into the Tokyo Bay. During the Edo period, Sumida's river banks played a key role in the transportation of lumber used for the construction. In addition to its logistical importance, it was also a place for the common folk to gather and enjoy activities such as seasonal flower viewing or river bathing. And there exist many woodblock prints depicting such activities. The area became plagued with sewage issues when the surrounding environs were industrialized in the post-war, but the situation has improved since. Many unique bridges span the Sumida River, including the Ryugoku and the Azumabashi bridges, which attract a large number of visitors as sightseeing spots. Massive fireworks displays in the summer are also always sure to draw a crowd. The river has served as a cornerstone for both the city and its people, having both aided in its development and serving as an inspiring backdrop for countless works of art and literature. Hmm. Oh, that's right. There's one more memory I have of this river. Do you mind if I tell you? Go ahead. It must have been about 20 years now, when I was still a schoolgirl. Back then, the Sumida River was much filthier than it is now. It was full of garbage and industrial discharge. It was scummy and slimy, and it stank. You could look out over the water and see dead cats and dogs and pigeons just floating. And one day, among all the filth and garbage, there was a piece of my missing classmate's hand. What the fuck? What? It was almost a miracle when you stopped to think about it. 
What were the chances that someone would find a part of her that was still recognizable? And that although everything but the palm had rotted away in the water, the part that was left would have an identifiable scar, and that they could tell it had been a murder from the blade marks on the bone. Wait, are you talking about the Nejima, the Nejima murders? So, you have heard of it. I'm impressed. I assume you were but an elementary schooler at the time. I wasn't really aware of it then. I only heard about it after the fact. I had no idea the victim was a classmate of yours. The Nejima murders. Notorious case from over two decades ago involving the murder of a female high school student. It first came to the attention of the authorities when part of a human left hand was discovered floating on this meter river. Testing revealed it to belong to a missing female high school student, as it appeared to have been sev severed deliberately, the police launched a murder investigation. A large-scale search of the river was organized, but the highly polluted state of the water made this impossible. Visibility was poor, the stench was intense, and the d divers quickly fell ill. They succeeded in recovering only the victim's head and what appeared to be part of her leg before this search was called off. At the time of the incident, the Sumida River was as polluted as it had ever been. Neither fish nor shellfish could survive in it, eventually causing the annual firework festival to be called off indefinitely. Over the course of the search, the police discovered a number of unidentified human bones. This caused a stir among the public, as several other young women had gone missing in recent years in the Tokyo area, and it was feared that they may have fallen victim to the same fate. Forensic technologies at the time, however, were not advanced enough to determine the identities of the deceased, so the police were unable to open any inquiries. Due to the overwhelming lack of circumstantial evidence, the investigation ground to a halt until a hitherto unrelated individual came to his attention. During a questioning about a separate incident, Fu Michika Nejima, a 36-year-old shop owner with no relation to the victim, divulged details about her that had never been released to the general public. An investigation of his background was conducted, leading to his arrest. Nejima testified that he had snatched his victim from the street and confined her in the underground storeroom of his shop, which also served as his living quarters. He chose for her, her for no special reason, but simply decided she was an important or an opportune target on seeing her walking alone at night. After keeping her locked up for several days, he restrained her, sewed her mouth shut, and severed her fingers and toes with a box cutter while she was still conscious. Ugh. As she screamed silently behind her sealed lips, he proceeded to her wrists, her ankles, her elbows, her knees, working his way inwards slowly and methodically. His victim constantly wavered in and out of consciousness. Her ordeal continued until she died of blood loss. Ugh. Nejima dismembered the rest of her body and disposed of it behind his home in the Sumida River before cleaning his storeroom and returning it to his everyday routine as if nothing had happened. The brutality of his actions shocked the nation when they were eventually reported. Once apprehended, Nejima readily divulged the details of the murder, but was less willing to explain his motive. When asked, he would only break down in tears, saying, I don't know what came over me, I know it was wrong. In the end, the police could extract nothing more from him than expresses of remorse. While the efficiency of his method strongly suggests that he had committed several crimes in the past, no corroborating evidence ever came to light. As most sentenced to life in prison at his first hearing, the sentence was imposed with no appeal from the defendant. Ugh. Is that what's the, uh, the one-sided reef? This seems kind of similar, right? Was he taken by that? Which was like, let's see, enraged her indifference. Tomezo brought a dagger to the canal, attacked her, cut off the arm and leg of one side of her body and threw them into the canal. It is kind of similar to that, isn't it? Maybe he was, I don't know, overtaken by the curse or something? Ah! <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! Was it somebody took somebody else's hair and put it on this dude? Ugh. Fumi Chika Nejima, the man who made headlines over two decades ago, is the perpetrator of the brutal killings of the Nejima murders. To be honest, it was all a bit of a blur. A wave of chaos was parting around me. Something like that. They said the rest of her body must have sunk to the bottom of the river. They've combed the riverbed, but they only ever found pieces. Everything else must have rotted and flowed out to sea. Afterwards, I heard that all the divers who had been looking for her fell ill. A sorry story for everyone involved, huh? It's funny. Everyone figures the river is filthy already, so one more piece of garbage won't hurt. But every little bit makes it worse. It's a vicious cycle. I know I wouldn't want to go rooting around down there myself. That's right, which is why the riverbed is the last place anybody would go looking. Or so was the killer's thinking, I suppose. The times were changing quickly back then. Things were confusing. Everyone seemed to be in a hurry. 
Young people were moving into Tokyo in droves. Some even ran away from home to make it in the big city. And they made easy targets for bad people. And a lot of them ended up disappearing without a trace. You see, back then, if you chopped a body up into tiny pieces and threw it in the river, it would rot quickly and discreetly and sink to the bottom, never to be seen again. Are you saying what I think you're saying? They arrested him shortly after, Fumichika Nejima. The man who killed my classmate and cut her into pieces. He was so methodical about it, it couldn't have been his first crime. And people began to wonder how many other girls he murdered the same way. You know, I just realized something. This game is a very similar thing to Zero Escape in that these random characters just know, like, this full lore <laughs> of, like, Have you heard of a, this late, this Egyptian lady called All Eyes? <laughs> and her crazy lore that I just happened to know. I mean, Grant, this is like a big case that was probably in the country. I mean, that probably swept across the country, but it's... <laughs> she still knows a lot of details about this shit. And people began to wonder how many other girls he murdered the same way. The police never found any evidence of other murders in the end. But the river knows the truth. How many corpses has it swallowed up over the years, I wonder? That same thought spread through everyone's mind, and they start to avoid this area. So really, this river has been rank with corruption for decades now. Or at least, that's how it seems to me. Well, was that interesting? Well, I can see why you don't have any good memories of this river. With all that darkness looking beneath the surface, there's no reason that you would. Still, if I may, ma'am, I'm surprised you know so much about the Nijima murders. Yeah, really. That's, that's all I was saying. But how could I not? After all, I was the one who found the hand. Oh. The police actually wrote me a thank you letter. They said it was only thanks to me that they managed to bring Nejima to justice. That was the only time my father ever said he was proud of me. Huh. I guess it just wasn't the killer's day. Sometimes I wonder if he resents me for it. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, hey! It's another one of these! Mockingbird in the heart! <laughs> the Pink Punisher! That was way up there. I'm glad I decided to look up. Sumita River. I have nothing but awful memories of it. He's gazing down at the water. Uh, you go first, I'll go first. I'll go first. There's something I need to tell you. What's up? Well, that girl. Michio Shirashi. The one who was with Shuichi on the day of the kidnapping. That's her... Well... She's dead. She's what? The student who committed suicide last week. That was her. Heard something like that had happened. Never got the name, though. Talk about bad luck. We finally got a lead, only to find it's turned into a literal dead end. Unless... Her death was the reason Juraichi was so shaken up. He said she was going to curse him. Was he talking about her taking revenge from beyond the grave? It probably isn't her. That probably isn't the same name as the other chick on the, the storyboard thing. Seems like we're back where we started. Not necessarily. That teacher knows something, I'm sure of it. At the very least, I'd put money on him having something to do with Miss Shirashi's death. That's why he's so scared of being cursed by her. I see. And also, something tells me he knows more about your son's kidnapping. In any case, I think I've got a good idea of what he's hiding. Call it a hunch. A hunch? Well, more of a theory. Care to take a guess? I can guess. I can't say for certain, but... Uh... Mr. Jonoichi. Mr. Jonoichi silenced Mishio Shirashi. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Jonoichi silent, Mr. Jonoichi. Uh, miss, with her, with murder, with a curse, with blackmail. Yes, with a curse? What if Mr. Jonoichi silenced Mishio Shirashi with a curse? What do you think? Wait, was he the one that said that, or was I the one that said that? I said it was me, right? I thought I was the one guessing that, though. Seems to me that he was more scared of what someone else might do. 
Hmm, that would be a little bit far-fetched. I see. I'm sorry if I disappointed you. I'm not really cut out to play detective. Yeah, I think it was her. I think it was. I think it was a the goof on the game. I think it was me saying it, and it spread it as him. Well, no point dwelling on speculation. The truth will be out in time. Right now, I think we need to have another chat with Mr. Genoichi. Please go ahead. All right then. I've been poking around places connected to the Seven Mysteries, looking for curse bearers, and I think I found a few candidates. Hmm. Oh. First, a tall man I ran into Kinishibori Park. I asked him for directions, trying to probe him a little, but he turned the questions right back around on me. And he was out there. Uh, he was out of there the second he figured I wasn't what he was looking for. I got the sense curses were nothing new to him. About 40% sure he's a curse bearer. Then there's this middle aged guy I saw on the South Waregasui Street. There's no question about this one. He had a curse stone in his hands. I wonder if this is the one that attacked me in the darkness before. Because I never saw what that guy looked like. He had a nervous air about him, too. It was clear he was up to some shady business. I'm gathering soul dregs, I'd bet. He'd make a good target. Next up is a pair. A young man and a woman I saw around Ryogoku Bridge. This time, the man came up to me and asked me flat out if I was a curse bearer. I told him I didn't know what he was talking about, and he backpedaled and left. Looks like they look around there often, looking for kindred spirits, would be my guess. Though it didn't seem like they were quite working as a pair. Gathering soul dregs in a group might be a decent idea, if you could make it work. But with things being how they are, it's gotta be hard to find folks one can trust. They've got brass, though. I don't know what their deal is, but I'd like to find out. Yeah, we never even figure out what the hell was going on with that girl. Last is two detectives I've seen sniffing around. The police are involved. Not necessarily. A body turned up in a local park a few days ago, so they might just be looking into that. Still, the park's got ties to one of the seven mysteries. Might be it was a curse that did the guy in. And if they're sending in detectives from the head office, then something's gotta be up. How do you know where they're from? Let's just say that when you're in the, this business, there are some faces you get to know. It did say, right, that he uh, he he went to school with that guy there, the, the young one. Anyway, that's everyone who's caught my eye. You found all of them in so little time. I really did hire the best. It's all in the name, ma'am. Richter Kai P.I. Well, except for Shogo, at least at this point, which actually... Well, I can't actually look. I can't actually look at the the story chart here, which just kind of suck that it's like I had to click this and it's like, an incomplete chapter. You wish to return. It's like I have to sort of abandon. It. I can't just like look at it. But I, I don't know if I've run into. Actually, no, I would not have run into him yet. No, wait. Make that Richter Kai investigator extraordinaire. My investigator extraordinaire. Is that why you can dress like that without drawing attention to yourself? You bet. An investigator extraordinaire can blend in like a chameleon in any outfit. Well, that aside, the middle-aged man and the young couple sound the most promising, am I right? Whichever we pick, it's still too early to make a move. Seems like the curse bearers are less involved with each other than we thought. Plus, there's still others we don't know about. I say we hang fire and see how things play out. Once more bodies are showing up, that'll get the pot nice and hot. And once it's boiling, our chance will come. Is something wrong? Not really. It just struck me. It's been 20 years since the Nejima murders. So it has. Not to spook you or anything, but I thought you might be interested in knowing. Mm hmm. Life in prison doesn't always mean life. There's precedent for first time offenders being allowed out on parole after 20 years. Only if they're found to show remorse and de desire to reform themselves, of course. That's right. I'm impressed you know so much. Still, it's hard for someone with a criminal record to reintegrate into society. I hear they've been trying to fix that recently, matching inmates with jobs and accommodation. Really? They keep an eye on them, of course, and make them report in for regular checkups. But to avoid discrimination, they keep the inmates' records a secret from everyone but their employees. They even give particularly notorious criminals new identities so they won't be recognized in the workplace. My. The way you put it. It's like you're saying Fumichika Nejima could be out on parole right now. 
back in society under a new name, with nobody any the wiser. It's possible. As it happens, a little birdie told me about a big name making parole a few months back. I don't know if it was that, that if that was Nejima, but our discussion just now did bring it to mind. I see. How unsettling. Now you mention it, I just remember something too. What was it? I was passing Kamagata High School a little while ago when I saw someone. I, oh, a janitor? I was like, is that Shogo? No. A janitor, I think. I could have sworn he reminded me of Fumichika Nejima. Oh. He looked a little different after 20 years. Much thinner than I remembered, too. I told myself I was just seeing things. But perhaps. Perhaps it was him after all. So, what next? The big question now is what the rest of the Curse Bears are up to. Luckily, the Sumida River is a good distance from any of the Seven Mysteries. It's unlikely the other Curse Bears will come all the way here. I can finally have a moment to think. I see. All right. Oh, suspend. You cannot currently progress any further. Once your situation has changed, select Resume to try again. Proceed to suspend will turn you to the... To the storage chart. Oh, well, that's interesting. Oh. Oh, okay. So I just got hard cut off there. That's what I mentioned before, and I, I didn't really understand what it meant. Uh, yeah, no, this is Yako Saka Sa Sakazaki. So, yeah. Not the name of the, the Shirashi girl. Interesting. I wonder if I'll know, how I'll know when I can actually move on in there. I'm guessing I gotta prog progress one of these other ones, but... I assume that everybody who I'm going to be controlling here is going to be a curse bearer, right? Which means it's going to probably be a grand total of seven that I'll have control over. Interesting, man. Very interesting. This is super engaging. This is really interesting so far. But all right, guys, this seems like a uh, good spot to end things here for now. The uh, plot thickens. It seems like had a dead end, though, with Haraway here pretty soon. So I guess I'm going to have to potentially hop to somebody else. Or I have to guess the thing right. Like, I don't know, go in here and... Like uh, guess what the uh like I give it give a guess or a correct like guess of what of like who killed who or who blackmailed or whatever but with where he was like asking me my opinion on something I don't know that'd be worth doing a retry on that or something but anyway guys I hope you all enjoy this episode if you did please leave a like and a favorite and subscribe if you're not already become a picky penguin aboard the SLP where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.